So AI art is now invading schools. Since it lost the war against adult artists, now it's poisoning the minds of children and young adults. But what's really behind all this? And how are people reacting to it? You need to hear this. Welcome to Our Mentor, my name is Sean, and today we're going to expose the secret hidden agenda behind why AR has begun to invade the curriculums of schools and colleges, who's really pushing this, why that's the case, how people are reacting to it, and what can you do about it if you don't like it? So here's what you need to know. Now, as I start to hear more and more schools and colleges start to implement AI training and AI technologies into it, especially with our programs, I just wanna ask you this, what's the big push? What's the big draw? So you might be thinking that you're gonna need this for your future. You might be thinking that it's gonna help you do things better or do things faster. So I just wanna ask you this, why are you being sunk into this? Well, it's gonna stem from these facts, something to the effect of like, well, you're not fast enough or you don't render well enough or you're not proficient enough or you're not competitive enough. Do you hear what I'm saying from this? The predatory fear-mongering campaign that is AI art is really good at hitting those nerves. When you really boil it down, what AI art is really meant to hit you on is your sense of lack. You're not good enough. You're not fast enough. You don't make anything that is industry competent. Maybe too, you're also going to say this gem, I'm not talented enough. Does this sound familiar to you? Because at the core of this and why they're trying to target younger audiences is literally this, is because they're so influential because they don't have any experience because they don't have any kind of barometer to judge themselves against. When you really peel back this onion, here's what you're gonna find, is a marketing agenda that's meant to hit on every single sense of lack that young people feel, every single fear, every single insecurity. And what that is, is a really heinous agenda that is meant to use the product in an attempt to anesthetize a younger generation into pushing out their product, into buying into their services, into buying everything that AI companies are trying to shove down our throats. But they can't do it with adults, so it's easier for kids. It's really manipulative, and what they're trying to do is just popularize this idea that it's okay to just bandage over your inadequacies versus to work on your humanistic desires versus to actually do something and creatively labor over something, which is, I'm gonna take a stab at here, what you actually got into art for. And it didn't have anything to do with corporate politics, am I right? But that's what's behind this sneaky and heinous agenda that AI companies are trying to invade schools with. Now, I can't go any further in this video without talking about job market confusions, because if there's one set of checks that AI art just can't cash, it's on this. And it's so big, I gotta split this into two talking points. So let's go. First off, let's talk about existing jobs, because you're probably a little worried right now as a young person watching this, that somehow you're not gonna get a job, or you're gonna need these AI skills, or you're gonna have to be employed through doing this. But I just wanna let you know, y'all, you are being set up for absolute ruin, for total disaster in adopting this philosophy. And here's why. Because AI art was never created, nor is it sustained, nor is its business model all about actually giving you opportunities. It's about taking them away. It's about pulling back. It's about cost savings. It's not about creating opportunities. It's about subtracting them. AI technologies are not about creation. They are about subtraction. So in that vein of thought, let me be very real and honest with you. If I'm totally wrong about everything that I say about this topic, and AIR were to be a very prevalent force in industries for a long period of time, which it won't, then here's what would happen. It's not going to create any entry level jobs for you. It's not going to create any junior level jobs or any junior designer jobs. All of that is gonna be put onto somebody who's at a senior level. It's not going to do anything for you. So this ungrounded rhetoric about somehow you're going to have to use it for your job is just stupid. It's absolutely foolish because all you're doing in employing any type of AI technology is you're eliminating every person for it. But here's the reality, friend, is that you will actually create jobs for yourself and people that will want to invest into you and you can actually be an entrepreneur and you can actually produce with a team something that is 
of notable value, something that is interesting, something potentially even legendary. Because when you're on a team or you're producing something through your human-based creative labors, you're actually able to do something of interest, something of value. But just to be honest with you, there's nothing at all of value that will ever come from AI art. And if the last two years haven't taught you that, the next 10 isn't either. So please don't fall for this foolish guys that it's somehow gonna be necessary for your job because that won't even be available. Now compounding all of this is the misperception that somehow AR will create more jobs, right? Is that somehow there's gonna be these posting for AI artists. There is nothing at all about AI art that is of value because literally the draw to it is what? Anybody can do it. So if you're currently enthused that AI art is somehow going to generate a brand new field of income for you, it really won't. Go ahead and look on Fiverr. That's your future, friend. Go ahead and look on any art platform. That's you. You can, at best, hope to earn less than a McDonald's wage. Go ahead and look at people trying to sell things on DeviantArt. That's you. All you have to hope for, for a new job field, for a new job market, is taking $10 commissions because it's literally worthless. Because if everybody can do it, why is it special? And why is it coveted? And why is that seen as a rarity in the market? And then therefore, what's the value of it? Because if it's abundant, it's worthless. Now let's say that it does create some fields and it does create some jobs. Here's what that will evolve into, okay? Companies will create those jobs for the AI artists, which they won't. And then what's inevitably gonna happen is that they're gonna get wise to how much they have to pay people that are in really economically advantaged countries. And then what are they gonna do then? Then they're going to outsource it. Because again, remember now, anybody can do it. And where are they gonna outsource it to? Economically disadvantaged countries where they can take advantage of everybody. Doesn't that sound nice, right? And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna be disrespectful to those people and they're gonna pay them horrendously low wages because at the end of it, all the AI art will create for a new job sector is going to create the equivalent of the AI art call center, where you just have a whole bunch of people in a room generating crap that nobody really cares about and anybody can do and you're easily replaceable. Does that sound like why you got into art in the first place? Does that fill your heart with passion and fulfillment? I don't think so, friend. Tell me if I'm wrong, but um, I don't think I am. So when I start to take a look at teachers and professors that are starting to write curricula, including AI art, or starting to promote this product, I really have boiled it down to three classifications. So here are the three types of teachers that are going to push AI art and why. The first off is going to be the completely downtrodden teacher. This is the teacher that's defeated, that doesn't feel like they can do well with what they do and how they do it. So they're going to try and use AI art to generate interest, to generate excitement. And yes, most importantly, is that they're gonna generate some new crowds to come into their classroom. The issue with this though, is that that's not gonna translate well. They're not gonna continue to take more courses based on any course that's predicated on AI or heavily utilizing AI because they're not interested in art. They're interested in the technology being an easy quick fix and an easy band-aid for it. The second type of teacher that would use AI art is gonna be the one that is totally ignorant. So corporate America and the AI bros, they do a wonderful job of promoting this completely false narrative about what AI can and can't do, will or won't do and they bought into it and they don't know any better. And listen, I don't blame you if you don't know any better and I don't blame your teachers for it either, but I do blame the effect of it because at the end of this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be promoting, honestly, a really harmful, destructive and violent agenda against artists that's predicated upon the belief that it's okay to abuse artists. And I'm not okay with that. And I don't think they'll be either as soon as they wake up and they realize the harmful effects of this. You can't just draw people into your course hoping that a new technology is gonna translate into further artistic interest, because it won't. And the third type of teacher promoting AR is the one that's just interested in job security. These are the ones that are nervous that AI is gonna put them out of a job, that people aren't gonna attend their schools, aren't gonna attend their classes, and it's gonna put them in financial risk. 
And this one I have a lot of empathy for because being a teacher is tough. Uh, being an art teacher is definitely another volatile version of that one. It's probably one of the more volatile versions of it, certainly. And therefore, they're worried that if nobody signs up for the courses, they're going to cut staffing, they're going to cut their course, and then they're going to be out of a job. The irony of this, though, is that it's already doing that, is that it's making people think that they don't need art education. They can bypass all that and somehow do something with it. But they won't and they aren't and that's really not going to change because if you want to do something in art here's just a really grounded reality friend you have to creatively labor over it a major issue that's going to stem from this though is that it's not going to translate well it's actually not going to create this sustained interest it's actually not going to produce any long-term results because here's why you can't fake passion careers. You can't fake something that you're not actually passionate about. You can't fake something that you know is harmful. You can't fake it as two passion fields being teaching and art if you don't actually have that genuine interest into it. If you're just seeing it as a band-aid for your numbers, that's doomed to failure. And you're not being honest with yourself as a teacher. Now, as I keep on hearing that schools and colleges are starting to pilot AI programs, I just want to ask you, why do you think that is? What is the driving force behind all of that? And why is that being pushed so much? And this wraps into a much bigger discussion. What is the point of education? And especially those of you that are in college right now watching this, what's the point of higher education? I am in school, I am a teacher, but I can tell you this, that there is a very profit-driven model behind it. So at the core of why a school or why an art department would start to push AI is real simple here, y'all, because you are its new target audience, because they want you to be their customer. Then they're trying to draw you into an art program. And that's not bad in and of itself, but here's what is bad about it is that it's literally just a manipulative ploy to try and get you into there. But then what happens when you're there? How do you succeed in something that you're not actually passionate about, that you hoped a technology would replace some aspect of skill development? And I can speak from experience on this, but there's definitely something to be said about people that are authentically in it versus inauthentically. And one thing that I've been saying for a long time now is that AI users are not in art for the right reasons. They got pulled into it with false promises. They got pulled into it with delusions of grandeur. They got pulled into it with a whole lot of checks that AI companies just cannot cash. But there's the problem. That is an unsustainable model at the same time because it's not going to be this way forever. This bubble is bursting already. There's already people that have already shifted away from this. There are a whole lot of dangers to the very shaky, fragile foundation of AIR companies that seek to disrupt it. And it's gonna happen. And then what's gonna happen? And it's gonna be back to business as usual. And those customers that bought into it, it's like people that go to a for-profit school. Sorry to tell you the truth, but I'm not sorry that now you know. At least now you can be informed when you move forward. Now, when you really look at the crux of everything to do with AI art, starting to come into school, starting to be promoted in curricula, starting to be adopted and even receiving some level of buy-in, who's to blame? Do we blame schools? Do we blame ignorant administrators? Do we blame the teachers? Do we blame the AI bros? Or do we blame something else? A reality I want to drop on you is this. I think the AI bros actually get too much of the brunt of this. At the end of it though, here's what I really actually empathize with them for. They're just the spigots for corporations and everything that they say is literally just the standard script of what they have been given and what they have been sold on. And then therefore they're going around and promoting that. So who's really to blame about this is corporations and corporations, man, I'm sorry, but they got way too much pull, especially when it comes to education and especially when it comes to the fact that there's a lot of backdoor politics that you and I are not privy to. At the core of who's pushing this agenda is always gonna be corporations. And at the core of why AAR is as sinister as it is and as heinously conceived as it is, it's really that, is that it's just corporate propaganda and it's corporate marketing, not designed to actually help you 
but to help you buy into their product. I'm sad to say, but I'm also really disappointed in the way that we've handled it in America in terms of public education too. Every single time that there is any type of online webinar set up by the National Art Education Association about AI, here's what I notice. It's always being pushed by people in corporations and from teachers that have bought in, and especially teachers that are in STEAM programs. Like, I just wanna let you know that STEAM programs make art subservient to corporate interests. And I'm not really okay with that because that's not really the focus nor the aim of art education in a genuine sense of it. And they have yet to have anybody come on any stage that is an AI ethicist, anybody that's an objector. They've never presented any contrary view to just, this is a brand new technology, which then filters everybody that doesn't know any better into this false hope or false belief system that that's somehow gonna attract more students to be more interested in art, when really what we're doing is we're giving everybody false hope and we're setting everybody up for disappointment. And I'm not okay with that because at the core of why people should get into art and especially experience art education, either as a student or as an educator, should be their success, should be their sustained efforts. But we're not focused on that. And if there's one thing that the Die Hard movies taught me, it's this, it's always about the money. It's always about how to maximize profit. It's always about how corporate interests trump humanistic interests when we're not savvy about it. And I don't want you to fall under that guise. I don't want you to just relinquish all of your hopes and passions. But looking at this really simplistically, yeah, it's all about the money. Have you ever noticed that? Now, have you noticed that AI is literally the buzzword of 2023 into 2024? Everything in the freaking world is advertising themselves as having AI this and having AI this, or thanks to AI technology, we can do this. Y'all, I wish I was joking about this, but I was literally buying cat food the other day and one of the bags said, enhance with AI. What? Like how? That doesn't make any sense right? Like, where do we go? Where do we stop with this? Do we want to say like, oh, our children are enhanced with AI too? This is so stupid. Who came up with this marketing concept? But again, it's a trendy buzzword. So why are schools pushing this? Because it's trendy, because it's buzzworthy, because a lot of people are talking about it and it's being heavily emphasized, overemphasized, in fact, wouldn't you say? So with that, they're trying to capitalize on that. So what you need to know though, is unfortunately this is doomed because what they're also capitalizing on is the current landscape of complete lawlessness. And the one thing that tragically, I gotta let you know about this, if you're a real heavy supporter of this, this is not gonna be forever. This is not going to be something that is going to be allowed to be completely unchecked and unregulated, this entire wild west landscape that we're currently looking at in terms of AI art, especially here, it's going to fall apart. It's going to get regulated. It's going to totally change. If you haven't noticed, there's literally lawsuits coming out every month against every AI art company, and for good reason. Even AI art companies, did you know that they've even said that what they're doing is currently completely economically and environmentally unsustainable. So if we're emphasizing this trend of integrating AI into everything, including schools and curriculum, just for that, then we're also overlooking the damage it's going to do. Don't you think? How do you justify that? Now, if you want to know what to do, how you can possibly combat all of this, and how you can still keep your art alive, well, I've got two things for you. First off, please make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. Y'all, I've seen that about 60% of you forget to hit those buttons, but you're coming back week to week. So please make sure that you help support that. And hey, if this is helping you or somebody that you know, please share it with them too to spread the good word. Now, the second thing that you can do is also understand that you are not alone. I think that there are just too many artists around that feel like they're just soloed out, that they're just on their own and that they are kind of singled out by not wanting to conform to AI. 
and not wanting to give into this hype. And if that's you, friend, I just want to let you know, no, you are amongst the majority of artists, not the minority of artists, who are not buying into this nonsense. So when we're introducing AI image generation in the schools, it has had horrific side effects. So we've seen people just fall into despair. We've seen people get depressed. We've seen people start to give up. We've seen complete abandonments of their craft. We've seen people launch into different fields because they thought that they wanted to do art, but now they're being pushed in this direction and they don't want to do that anymore. And then on a really extreme note, on the most tragic note, is we've even seen people ending their lives for this. And this has to stop, especially because of the fact that I want to let you know, AI totally thrives on this. They relish in our misery. They relish in how you're despairing. They relish in the fact that you feel like you have to conform, that you have to adapt. That is the mentality that they are promoting. That's their marketing scheme. And what they're doing is they're capitalizing on this. And now you might be thinking to yourself, well, look, I'm just going to, I'm just going to ignore this. I'm going to stay off social media. And, uh, you know, eventually this will all just kind of go away. But my friend, I, I admire you for wanting to take the high road, but I need to let you know this. Artists failed on the high road a long time ago with this topic. And we tried to just stay altruistic and we tried to just stay on our craft. But you know what? AI grew in the shadows of that one because we don't speak up for ourselves, because we're often just really absorbed in what we're doing and what we're doing matters to us a lot. Like I'm gonna hope it matters to you too watching this, right? And what this has created is this really toxic space for AI to grow its influence because there are not enough of us trying to do something about it or saying something about it we're just acting up about it too and there are implicit and explicit ways you can do this so please take my advice here because as somebody who is a professional in this field who has been a professional in art education for over a decade here are some facts and some knowledge about what you can do to change things starting right now so that you don't have to entertain this crap in your schools now, have you seen AI bros push this idea that, well, you're learning all these concepts and you're learning all these new theories. And because when you prompt or when you're generating something, you're somehow learning this vocabulary that's going to allow you to be a better artist or to generate better artwork or to upscale where you're currently working at. Well, I need to let you know that all of that, it just doesn't hold any type of water because all that is promoting is literally the lowest level of learning. If y'all ever look up this theory, real theory in education, it's called Bloom's Taxonomy. And what that essentially does is it outlines the levels of learning and what is of most value. And when you take a look at vocabulary, it is boom, bottom of the barrel, worthless. Just because you know something doesn't make you a master of it. Just because you hear something or you know a new word or you know an art movement doesn't at all mean that you actually understand it. And this is a huge fallacy that I see a lot of people pushing online. And I just need to combat that with facts here. That is completely worthless knowledge. What AI really capitalizes on is this idea that your ideas matter. But my friend, I just want to let you know, no, your ideas don't matter that much. As an example of this, there's a lot of really broke people who have a lot of really good ideas. And for you as a creative, as a true artist, right? You like that crap. You like that labor because through that, you're actually going to develop your ideas through just slamming out as many things as you can, this really shows an immaturity in your creative and imaginative thought process because through actually laboring over your craft, you're going to come to what are actually your good ideas because once you really dive into your creative processes, once you invest into it, here's what you're gonna find. Most of your ideas are not very good ideas. Your first idea is your worst idea is a very common line that we follow in artistic development and especially in art education. This is something that I tell my students a lot. No, your first idea is gonna be your worst idea because once you start to work into it, once you have that initial excitement and you start to get through it, and artists tell me if this is you, have you ever started to work through it and then you come to realize like, man, this wasn't that great. There's a reason for that friend. Now, you are not ever going to get better at solely investing into your ideas because you have to invest into something much more meaningful and that begins and ends with your artistic labors because there's absolutely no value in just learning terminology. 
A great theorist does not make a great practitioner. And it's the same thing, especially with AI image generation. Now, are your teachers or professors, are they pushing you to use AI because of the level of product that it's able to produce? Are you looking at the angle and you're looking at that and you're just feeling like, man, that's just so much better than what I can do right now? Are you looking at what is being posted online from AI users and you're like, man, that's that render quality. It's just, it's so much at a higher level, my friend. What do you suffer from here is you're really taking a look at and you're overemphasizing the product. And that's a real thing that I think a lot of younger artists really fall victim to even before AI. This is not a new thing, but especially with social media, you look online and you look at other people's work and then you compare it against your own and you feel like crap. But here's the thing. The most valuable part of what you're doing as a creative, as a true artist, is not the product. It's not the end goal. Because I do want to ask you that, like, do you value your artwork only at the end or do you value it throughout? And what that produces is this really destructive mindset where you value the product over the process. And I'm speaking from, yes, an economical standpoint, but I'm also going to speak to you right now as a fellow human, because if you only feel good at the end, you're really undermining everything that you're doing here. At the core of what makes you unique is going to be your process. Through your process, that's how people become invested into you. That's how people like you because when you're investing into your process, when you're really diving into how you do things, why you do things, those decisions that you make, you're going to make these mistakes. And those mistakes are going to bring character into your artwork. One of the major flaws of AI is it's overly perfected and it's overly crisp. Y'all, let me ask you this. Do you want your artwork to look like everybody else's where nobody can even tell that you had a hand in it? Or do you want your artwork to look like yours? Do you want somebody to look at you and go, oh, hey, it's that guy, it's that girl's artwork. Oh man, I love that artist. You want them to have that reaction, don't you? How are you going to do that when your number one objective is perfectionism? Because perfectionism is the thief of joy. Perfectionism is also just another mask for your insecurity. Because if you're solely focused on a perfect end product at the end, well then you're just really over invested into what it's gonna look like in the end instead of how you are gonna end up better. Have you ever thought about that? Because one of them is sustainable and one of them is replaceable. Guess which one's which? Now, can I share with you why using AI in any type of educational institution is the most unethical practice and honestly could get you fired? So when you take a look at any educational profession, anybody that's involved in higher education to public education, is that we all live by a code of ethics. And what that code of ethics generally says in pretty much every single state, at least in the United States, and somebody tell me if this is mirrored at least, outside of the US is this, is that you cannot use copywritten materials without the express consent of the creator of the IP owner, okay? But what's curious here, so we have an entire database of artwork that was scraped and sewn together through copywritten materials that nobody expressed any consent for, that nobody allowed to have happened, was done underneath everyone's nose. And because that, was used to train the data of all AI image generators, does that not constitute an ethics violation? Let me put it to you another way, just to express this. If I buy a stolen TV, does that still make me culpable in that? Absolutely it would in the eyes of the law. So in the same vein of thought, this is a very clear ethical violation. And what I wanna be really clear with you on is that AI bros typically approach this honestly from a sense of entitlement. They feel like they are allowed to do it because it is out there. And if you're going to support AI art, then you're also supporting art theft. And that is a very clear, obvious issue. It's something that AI bros just don't want to admit because again, entitlement is very ripe amongst those communities. If you deny that though, it's honestly just selective hearing. I'm sorry to be honest with any AI bro that made it through this video at this point, but that's just the honest truth and they don't want to admit it. Now what also compounds how confusing all of this is, is that literally the national art education defines what artistic plagiarism is and within that it is using the work of another artist for the direct representation of your image but hold on 
Doesn't that sound a lot like how AI image data was trained? Doesn't that sound like their outputs? And listen, if you're denying this, I just wanna ask you this. If you don't think that that art was stolen, that it took without asking permission for it, then how the heck can Midjourney literally spit out exact frames from movies? I rest my case. Of course it was. This is an established fact. This is not fiction here, but it seems like some educators and some institutions are really overlooking the ethics of this. But what do you think is gonna happen? How long do you think this can sustain itself before the whole castle comes crumbling down? I don't think we're that far off from it. I wanna ask you this, what is of most value in any type of artwork, okay? You might be like, well, it's how much it fetches a price for or how a company would use it or how prevalent it's gonna be. Then I wanna challenge you with this. What if it's none of those? Because when you're producing artwork, when you are developing your skills, it is all in service to this simple fact. You are developing something unique in you. You are literally sowing the seed and you're growing. What is your artistic voice? And now employing this technology into your education, the way that it's been introduced into it is that we're robbing everybody of that because we're instead focused on uniformity. We're instead focused on conformity and we're removing art from being a really great humanistic product, an artifact of your humanity, an artifact of your own individual thoughts. And instead we're offsetting everything that makes that about you, that makes you valuable into just essentially you being a cog in a machine. And are our industries a little bit like that? Sure. But also, are there really well-known artists in every single industry? Yes. Do you know why that is? Because they do something unique with it. So in using AI to offset what you're doing is you're actually muting your artistic voice. You're stifling your potential. You're robbing yourself of experiencing that joy, of experiencing that fulfillment. Because as an artist, let me ask you this. Don't you feel great when you're done? Don't you feel great when you take a look at your artwork? At the end, you're just like, man, I know that that was a little bit of suffering that I induced in order to get here, but you felt great about it, didn't you? At the end, you feel fulfilled. So I wanna ask you, do you still feel that way after you make your AI art, after you generate something? Or yes, even if you're upscaling something, what are you doing there? Then you're just outsourcing your creativity. You're outsourcing your individuality in that because you feel insecure that you're not up to par. But my friend, you are up to par. You just haven't put in those miles. You haven't put in that time. And you trying to shortcut that, it's never gonna replace that. And that's what I want all educators who might be watching this to understand you're robbing that potential from your students. You are the thief of their future. And now AI bros never really seem to have anything to say about this, but I'm gonna use this as an example as to why I can't think how you can ever claim anything utilizing the AI image generator at any capacity is going to be your own. I very often take artwork from my subscribers and I show them how they can improve their artwork. And I show them tips and I show them tricks and I show them how they can get more clients and stuff. And if you like that, again, make sure you like and subscribe because I'm all about that stuff for you. But once I paint over that, is that mine? Can I really call that mine? Is that my idea? Because at the end of every single one of those, very often I reflect back and I'm like, okay, I like how they did this, but um, it's probably not the same way that I would have done it. It's not the same composition. It's not the same lighting. It's not the same posing. It's not the same elements that would uniquely reflect me. So just imagine this. What if I then put that up on my social media and I worked that up after already having that base and I said, boom, here's my artwork. Would that be ethical of me? Should I do that? I would say no, because I would feel wrong doing that because I took somebody else's work and claimed it as my own. And I think that's morally wrong, don't you? And why is that? It's not my voice and it's not yours either, is it? Make sure that you let the people that matter know about that. Now, let me ask you this. Are you being discouraged by people that are heavily into AI? Do they maybe make fun of your artwork? Do they tell you that your artwork isn't good enough? So let me ask you this on that note. Who is telling you that and is it worth listening to? Because listen, I wanna give you a very hot take here. 
you need to curate the source of all info because just to be brutally honest here, if they're an AI bro, if they're your mom, your dad, your uncle, your teacher that doesn't even make art anymore, or they're, they're, just, they're just there for a paycheck, if they are somebody that is not currently living the art life that you want, if they don't have the art skills that you desire to grow into, then you should not listen to them. Because at the core of all information is this simple fact. Your teacher cannot bring you any greater distance than they have run themselves. And when you start to take a look at everybody that has loads of opinions, what makes them valuable? Why should you listen to somebody who's not doing the thing that you want to do? Why should you listen to somebody who is not able to produce the skill level that you want to inherit? Why should you listen to somebody like that when they can't even do, nor do they live the art life that you aspire to? And then on that note too, check out the people that are giving you the worst critiques, okay? Check out the people that have nasty things to say. Check out the people that have the most honestly uninformed and unhelpful things to say. Here's what you're gonna find. They're the least competent people. Honestly, any artist that has gone through the struggle of making really great artwork, any artist of any notoriety level, any artist that you look up to and admire, okay? I'm gonna guarantee you this. If they were to give you feedback, it would be very meaningful and it would be very empathetic. Do you know why that is? Because we've all been through the struggle. When I critique artwork, I come from a very informed place and an empathetic place because I care about that person. And typically, here's a great example, right? Like AI bros every once in a while, they'll drop into my comments and say something stupid and completely uninformed about my artwork and they'll have, they'll notice something minor. So you wanna know what I do to that? I ask them this question and I encourage you to ask them this too whenever you have anybody critiquing your artwork. Hey, what's your artwork like? Cause like for me, when an AI bro drops a nasty comment about my artwork, literally the first thing out of my mouth is like, oh, wow, glorious sage AI bro. Could you please kindly drop a link to your portfolio so that I can learn from you master. And generally, do you know what I find? They can't draw their way out of a box because they don't have skills and therefore it makes it easier for them to rip into people that are developing their skills, that are trying harder than them. Do you know why? Because you make them feel inferior. Because you trying exposes the fact that they are not. So my friend, keep up what you're doing. You're on the right track there. Don't let your haters become your enablers for giving up. All right, so now you might be thinking at this point, what do I do about this, Sean? Because all of this is happening, or you might be a student, whether you're in university or you're just in public education, and you're like, look, well, what do I do about this, okay? Well, look, here are some things that you can do in order to combat this. Number one, real easy, don't sign up for the courses. When you see any type of image generation in the title of a course or in the description, just don't sign up. Listen, the number one way for any school to get the very clear picture that this is not what you, their customer, wants is just don't sign up for the courses. They can't run it if they don't have a certain number of people sitting in a class registered for it. They will not run it. They just won't. And then therefore, boom, that destroys it. After like a few semesters of it, they'll be like, okay, well, this just isn't taken off the way that you said it would. We're going to ax it, okay? Also, here's the next thing. Voice your concerns. Let your teachers, let your professors know that this is not comfortable for you, that you're not enjoying this, that this is not what you wanted to do. Because I'm just gonna ask you this, is this the version of art making that you wanted to experience? Because generally the consensus is, heck no, it's not. So let them know that. Now let's say that you have a real uppity professor or a real uppity teacher who is a real champion of this technology, which is weird because it's hurting artists left and right. And they're championing literally the downfall of artists. And that doesn't make any sense to me. That's a really short-sighted goal. Email the person above them. Do this from an anonymous account. Just go online, just make up some bogus email and let them know like, hey, I just wanna anonymously send this because I don't want any type of backlash for this scenario, but look. Here's what we're feeling. I'm not alone in this. I have other classmates that feel the same way too. And I really like your help with this because this is destroying it. And here's another thing you can do. You can threaten to leave. How about that? You could threaten to leave and they'll get the clear picture because you in your attendance, you're money to them. And if they care about that, like they will, then they're gonna reconsider the platform altogether, okay? Another thing you can do too is this. If you're in an art school right now, especially like if you're just going for like general illustration, 
you maybe might want to reconsider that school. You might want to reconsider where you're going right now and instead look at your alternatives. Can you switch to another school? Uh, just to be real with you, most art jobs don't even require a degree anymore, okay? Unless you want to go into like teaching art, in which case I'm going to tell you straight up, like, yes, you do need that because you will be overlooked from somebody that does have an actual art education background. If you don't need that degree, you don't need to go to school anymore, okay? And there's plenty of online alternatives to it too. You can go to online courses, you can take online schooling too, and you can also just enroll in like mentorships, for example. Those are the best places for artists to go and honestly, you'll learn a lot faster there on average. My friend too, here's just another thing. When you don't use AI art, just don't tell anybody about it, okay? Because they probably won't know the difference anyways. My friend, here's what I wanna let you know, is that there is some level of resistance you can do and you don't have to fear backlash, but I wanna just put this on you too. If you don't try to do something about it, then you're gonna stay in your misery. And if you do do something about it, and even if it gets a little uncomfortable and that produces some level of misery, well, then the outcome is the same, isn't it? But which form of misery do you want? Do you want misery from having to stay in that circumstance? Or would you prefer to at least feel good that you stood up for yourself? That's your choice, my friend, and I can't make it for you. I'm just laying it out there and giving you some alternatives. Now, how about this topic? Have you ever used AI for references? Because the most common thing I see a lot of people that are artists actually attempting to use AI for is references. And this has been promoted and it's been floated around and people are saying things like, have you ever heard stuff like this, by the way? Have you ever heard people say things like, well, I just wanna use it because it helped me flush out my ideas or I can learn something from it? Well, listen, friend, I just wanna let you know, that's really not the best place. And in fact, it's actually one of the worst places that you can go to get references because what that's gonna do, is gonna turn you into a glorified copy machine. And it is riddled with so many flaws that you don't know about because it doesn't know about it either, friend. And if you wanna know a way better place that you can go as an artist, check out this video right here. I'm gonna show you the best places to go this year and beyond. It's gonna help you be a much better artist. And hey, if you enjoyed this, please share it with somebody that you know. See you next time.